Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 28. Eight, that's right. 28. I lose count. I lost count at about five or six, but <laughs> we got some fun Why? stuff. Who's counting anyway? This well, is a match. That's true. Well, it's so we can keep track of what's what and oh. where's where. So okay. someone says, well, what episode was that on? Well, uh, it was on number 17. It's because a super fan can go, remember back on Tech Talk number seven when you said that the best microphone for voice? No, just no. kidding. No. <laughs> that's not what we said, really. <laughs> Anyway, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight. We're going to still continue on with this discussion about interfaces and stuff. And we've got uh, we've got a, an actual band an un- V4. And an unboxing. And an unboxing of the Evo 4. Ooh, Evo 4. All that coming up on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Seems it doesn't seem so big to me, but you know, it just it reverberates. It's shrinking. I know. Got an interesting email from our friend Jack DeGolia today. He he is a thinker. Of voice actors. I, he tends to really think about this. Stuff. Yes, he is. But he was like, you know, he was uh, talking about this this uh, acoustic video from uh, the the San Sofia, uh, the the mosque in Istanbul. The what's the who's the one? Over? Yeah, but it was like this, you know, what this what this choral group would sound like normally, and yeah. then what the acoustics were like in this huge mosque slash cathedral in Istanbul. Oh, that's cool. And okay. it was it was really neat sounding. What it had to do with voiceover, Jack, we're not exactly sure. It's because, fascinating. Yeah, because it's interesting. Because we're acoustical engineers. And, Are you all right over there? Yeah, and have a little bit of a leg cramp. Oh, but, man. You need a massage? Uh, maybe, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got, uh, you've got an unboxing to do tonight. And, uh, and it's mm-hmm. not a pair of shoes. It's, uh, <laughs> we've got, uh, we're, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about interfaces. And we've got lots of great questions tonight. From we people did. all over the world. We, def- we definitely you know, did. Somebody from Portugal has, has a question. We got two questions from Portugal in one week. It's amazing. Clearly, they're watching in Lisbon. <laughs> well, I have an idea. Okay, go and, for and, it. And, and the whole idea of the way we do our show and being spontaneous. Let's try something. Okay. So right now, you're hearing Dan's voice on a Sennheiser 416. Yes, you are. But I think it'd be interesting to see what his voice sounds like on the Vanguard V4. 
okay, I think we should switch it out live right now on the air, like we did before the last episode, <laughs> right before we went on the air. Oh, what this, do you say? This is going to be interesting. We'll right? so okay, you're, well, you're we'll hearing Dan on the 416. Well, you just keep talking while I And just while he's doing that, I'm going to mute this. that mic. Yeah, so, because we got this Vanguard V4 in, and I thought it'd be fun to hear it in context. Now, Dan's mic right now is pretty far up and above. So when we go to the V4, because it's a large diaphragm condenser, we're going to bring it in a bit closer. It'll probably be in frame and you'll be able to see it. But uh, we also, I just wanted to make this as entertaining, as yes. entertaining for me as possible. And it always yeah, is just, watching just... Dan replace mics on the air. It's a blast. Um, but yeah, we get stuff sent to us from time to time. We see vendors at the shows, like I was just at NAM show. And through those connections, we get to demo it's equipment. The thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> we get to demo equipment like this, and it's a lot of fun. So um, typically what will happen when we demo gear is we do it in sort of a controlled environment. Well, this is so a controlled environment. This is, this is more this about is studio. the experience of using the equipment and things like that. But we'll likely do some, like, booth recordings as well where you get to hear them more in the context of a, a voiceover studio. We've done this in the past. We did a, a super duper a mic, mic shootout shoot of yeah. like five, uh, what was it, about 10 different mics under $500? Right. This could be a part of a, a new under $500 shootout because this is an under $500 mic. Yeah, right? and this is this is, this is is a, a new model from our friends at uh, at uh, Vanguard Audio. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they let us try the mics. They send us T-shirts. We go, great mics. Yeah. This is a great mic, and I've been playing with this one all week. It's 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 a little different now. The the Vanguard, uh, the other one that their multi directional mic that has the you know, tube much, mic too. Yeah, right? it, it takes a power supply and you gotta switch it all out to change the different patterns. This one just has a simple pattern button on it. Uh, so you know, right now it's in cardioid pattern, mm -hmm. so it's gonna pick me up nicely. From you know, people forget that a cardioid pattern isn't this flat plane; it's a hemisphere around the mic so i can really move around and i'm still going to be pretty much in the sweet spot on this mic yeah these like a large oh, i've cut my mic just to i, I cut my mic because i wanted to hear exactly what that mic sounded like but a large diaphragm condenser the pickup pattern is pretty broad so right. that the sweet spot is wider right the, the converse problem of that is means it's going to hear more of your booth it's going to hear more of your environment right. so you just have to be careful about the getting too far away from the mic right but it has some interesting patterns then it. yeah like, it's so got, what is it in right now what right now is? it's in cardioid okay i'll so mute it while you it, switch it and we can share yeah i mean ones. which you know and sometimes we, we we're constantly hearing from people saying why does my mic sound so muffled right turn it around you know you're talking into the wrong side of it always talking to the side with the logo anyway okay so it turns out we're going to switch it now to a figure eight pattern okay i'll cut the mic go ahead okay right, go ahead. now it's switched okay this is a figure eight pattern now it should sound pretty much the same from this direction, but if you're one of those people that tends to talk into the wrong side of the mic, this will cover your butt. Yeah, this is this is how you cover your butt because now, you know, I get to see my bald head here, but uh, but now it, it's you're you've got sort of a circular, not really a cardioid pattern on both sides. But we, but, but speak into it from here, then it's totally null it's from this side. Totally dead. And why that's cool, the fact that it's really dead from the sides means if you've got issues in your booth, maybe you've got a big glass window or some reflective surface that's giving you trouble, if you put that dead spot on the side where that reflection is, you've eliminated it. Right. You will not hear it. Right. The key thing is behind the microphone, you do have to have that well treated. Right. So the back should be facing towards a bass trap or some really well absorbed, some good absorbing um, acoustic treatment. Right. But it, it's an interesting way to control the way the mic sounds. It also gives it, I don't know if you guys noticed, um, there's a little more proximity effect. Just a little bit. I can hear it for so sure. It's more like a to... ribbon mic, actually, yeah, when you go to a figure, which rich. is also in a figure eight usually. Yes. So, so. It's, it gives the mic more than one personality. Right. But it has another personality. What's that? It's, you know, it's, it's a schizophrenic mic. All right. I'm now flipping the switch again. Go for it. It's been flipped. It now is an omnidirectional mic. Yeah, so now I'm talking into it as well. I and I'm talking to it from mic. over here, and you're I talking to it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I can go anywhere in the room. The other people in the studio can talk. Talk. Other people in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> See? And, and it's a voila. Yeah. I'll demand voila. 
So that's this is a great thing to do when you've got an ensemble and you right. need multiple people around a single microphone. Right. But again, now the microphone's picking up everything. everything. The air you conditioning. Hear, and, you know. When I'm further away, you can hear my voice bouncing off the walls. And there's a lot of acoustic treatment in here, and you can still hear a little reflection. So you don't want to use Omni that often. But again, it gives this mic three distinct personalities that uh, makes it pretty versatile, especially yeah. at, what is it? 400 or something like that it's under 400 i yeah. think yeah go to yeah. vanguard audio and check it out our good yeah. friend derek over there who uh they make their their handmade microphones here and here in california and they're uh and they're really nice you know yeah. and, I, and i and i like this put one. that anyway, back on going back uh, to cardioid here okay okay back into cardioid that's cardioid yes always try to mute your mic or take off your headphones when playing with these switches by the way folks because they almost always make a pulse or a thump yes uh, so definitely be careful when you're yeah. and when you and never ever turn phantom power on or off with your headphones on. Right. And never unplug or plug your mic on in with phantom power and your headphones on. You're not supposed. Oh, well, that would explain a few things. Well, you anyway, can, you would hear a very loud pop. It's, yeah, it's, but it's, I like it. It's it's a very it's a very hot mic. It has uh, good output. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, and now remember, all of this stuff is still it's still designed for recording music. We're just using it for our own purposes yeah you know there's your razor blade there so you can do the unboxing Thanks, yeah. um and um but i like it it's it you know i've been using it on a bunch of stuff this week uh i got to do this big concert announce thing that's in times square this you know next week and Neat. i'm like i'm like oh okay i'll stand off and just do it that way yeah. and uh, did you do that out here in this room or did you do it in i your did booth? it i did it in the booth mm -hmm. you know so and a, a totally controlled environment although yeah. it's pretty controlled out here too so yeah anyway so thanks to the guys at uh, vanguard who who sent us that and uh, the check it out now you get to take it home and check it out awesome yeah and i'm going to turn back on my show eq okay i had flattened it out for that little segment but now good i add a little bit of top end to it make it sizzle a yeah. little bit for the show All right. So now we have another new thing. So from Nam Show, you remember the V4, and you also remember the first segment we we uh, we uh, aired was about the Evo Four from Audience. Audience. And as promised, I received one. So and here it is. I've been I've had it for over a week, and I've been waiting to open it on Ooh. the show. So here we go. So. Um, I don't normally do unboxings. I really don't like doing unboxings at home, but doing it live on the show, there's something more fun about it, especially using a big open razor blade. It just makes it something more thrilling about it. Notice how I'm opening it away, away from, from you. Me. Yes. Yeah. And this thing is wrapped in like reinforced, not packing tape, but reinforced tape. So it makes me, it definitely nerve wracking. Well, George is doing opening this thing uh, yeah. with an open blade. Yeah. The, they, they send us this stuff to test it. You know, they're not necessarily giving it to us. They just want us to test it, review it, see if it's uh, up to the, you know, our standards, because we have set the standards, literally, uh, for voiceover. And, uh, of course, I, I'm always of the opinion it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference what you use uh, to record voiceover, as long as it's good quality. A lot of stuff has more to do, and the Evo will probably explain, you know, probably give us a good example. Well, of I that. open it from the bottom. Okay. That's always a good way to start an unboxing, right? Yeah. It's the bottom of the yeah. box. Yeah. It's <laughs> more important to George and I, it's really more important what the function, sorry, okay. is for uh, these things. There you go. That's All what right. you're going to see when you it's get a, your. It's a different type of thing you've So let's take a look at it. Let's hold this in the frame. Da -da. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Let's see, work smarter, not harder. We're all a big okay. fan of that. Yep. A few Evo it's stickers. Virgin. All right. What'd you say? It's not extra virgin oil. No. Extra uh, virgin volume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few stickers. <laughs> we'll put those on the stop signs in the neighborhood. T-shirt. This is T-shirt. Oh, it's a T-shirt. All right. I believe this is the special influencer edition. <laughs> It's a T-shirt. <laughs> okay. And, and there's the, box the actual, actual, actual retail box. Much, much smaller. So let's take that out. All right. There we go. Now we're getting an idea of how compact this thing really is. And uh, so um, you guys saw on the show, but this is a, a new product from Audient. It is a complete ground-up design product. So... 
far as I understand, there's absolutely nothing in common internally or externally, obviously, to anything else. Um, in fact, Dan's got an ID14 over there, and they don't look anything alike. So this is a yeah, whole new it's product. A to line. Totally different, different concept. It's got it? that nice suction on the lid. I like this new theme of really high quality boxes coming from China. <laughs> it's, it's like automatic. It's airtight. Uh, yeah, it's so nice. So th this is cool. It's a very small manual. This is another trend in, in gear. Mixer Face was the same way. It just has one card. Because they realize, one, most people never RTFM. Most people never read the freaking manual. So that's one thing. And two, if it's a good piece of design, you don't need a 50-page manual, right? Because you should be able to pick it up what you need to do from a very short manual. And this one definitely is one of those kind of situations. Right. Plug in your computer, USB, da da da. Um, you do need to install install drivers. It says I don't know if that's Even true on Mac, Mac and Windows. Hmm. It doesn't dif differentiate on here. I believe from what they said at the show, you don't need drivers for Mac at all. But it, which is why we like Mac. They must have drivers for both. It's funny. I just set up a Steinberg for somebody, uh, yeah. the UR twenty two, right? And I did it by proxy. He was in New Jersey. It worked great on the Friday. When we set it all up, of course. Saturday comes. You walk away from it. It wouldn't. De it wouldn't detect the device correctly. Hmm. Um, and then we. Inst I had him install the driver, and then it worked. So that was a weird mystery. Why would it work, and then not the next day? So sometimes, if the manufacturer does provide a driver, you should probably install it, and not do the whole plug and play thing. Anyway, USB C. So they're going with the modern uh, audio or uh, modern USB connection instead of the older micro USBs or others. And finally, for you fans of unboxing videos. Yes. Wow. Boy, there are a about... lot there are a lot of you by the way. Yes. Have you ever seen an unbox therapy guy? I... Wow. I have They're other in a things studio that <laughs> is big enough to be a warehouse for like Amazon. That's how big it is. This anyway. thing is Spartan. Anyway, yeah, it's very Spartan. Um it's uh almost a perfect square, I guess from the it's... side. Yep. And here's the face. Uh, it has, a f so this this is going by that new design where like the Apollo and the uh, what the uh, all the the Apogee and things like that where right. there's one central knob who does a bunch of different jobs and what that knob does is determined on which buttons you press over here. So I'm I'm I have a love hate with that. I love being able to tell somebody when they're physically looking at their thing, turn that knob, not, not, you know, turn them where to set them. It's a little more fiddly, but I understand why they do it. It allows the unit to have a lot more features and be small. Right. And there's less design cost when you do it that way. But it's got a ring of LEDs for indicators. It's got the input selections. This is the headphone level control here. The ability to control the one, the, the two inputs independently. And then the most unique feature is this green button, which I'm looking forward to testing out. The green button. This green button is the auto level detect button. Interesting. And as far as I know, this is the first interface that is, because I've known of another two that were really expensive. This is the first affordable one where it has a mode where it will just listen for a little while while you do your script. You know, you get your level and the unit will dial the gain in until it finds the best gain setting for the performance you're giving. And then when it's done, it's set. Does it define, but do you define what those different performances are? Because voiceover and music are different. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it, I think as far as I know, it's just listening for a level. Mm -hmm. So it'll, you know, I, I have to use it in the real world to find out exactly what it's going to do. But I imagine it has like a neutral gain and it's going to bring it up or bring it down based on what you do. Now, at that moment, if you don't do an, uh, if you don't do a read that has the dynamic range of that piece, you're not, it's not going to be right. It doesn't do that dynamically during the read. Right. It's a preset. It sets it before you start. Because I'll tell you, one thing you don't want is a gain control that's constantly moving on you no. while you're recording. Remember AGC on oh, video cameras? Oh, geez, yeah. How bad they were back in the day? Yeah. You don't want that. So it just sets the gain and then so that you don't have to go over here, set do a real read, play with the knob back and forth. It's supposed to be doing that for you. That's the whole idea. Still, you should be doing that anyway. You should be. And the other thing is I have no idea what that gain setting is based on. Is it based on a peak level, an RMS? How much um, headroom will there be? 
So is it going to set it so that the peak is minus six? I think we need to talk to the, the people at Audient Nay. Well, yeah. What do you set this thing? We'll, we'll probably find out by doing a real world world test, which right. I hope to do shortly. And they're counting on me to do one, so I better do it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's the Evo uh, Four from Audient. There's also the Evo Eight. Right. It's called the Four because it records four tracks. Actually, it records two mic tracks. And it will record two more tracks, which are the return from the computer. So if you're doing podcasting, yeah. yeah, for podcasting, that is cool. So it allows you to record the Skype or Zoom or whatever coming back from the computer to two additional tracks in your DAW, like in an Adobe Audition in multi-track mode. Right. You can make tracks three and four the phone call. And then when you're done, you have separate level control right. and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'll be interested to see, you know, how strong the the, the preamp is in this. And, Me too. Yeah. Well, well, you know, is it does it have a lot of good clean gain on it? And uh, yeah, pass it over to Townie too. Yeah. Here, take a look. Let him feel it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty light. It's very small. It's pretty light. It's probably not that much in there. You know, a circuit board and another board for the jacks, and so that little box replaces <laughs> this, this huge box of crap. I, <laughs> I really wanted to try this, and I could not get it to I'm work. I'm still not convinced it's dead. The last okay. time I used this Tascam, it did function when I put it away. So we'll try some new drivers. Maybe it's a not. Maybe it's not a Catalina thing. I mean, maybe it won't. Work it was. I tried it. I tried it on uh, before. Mojave. Cat, on Mojave. Okay. Wouldn't wouldn't recognize. I have High Sierra on my laptop, so maybe we well, can we'll try check it on that, that out. We're gonna do. It takes time to prepare for this, and it's been a busy time of year, folks. But we do plan on doing a shootout with things that are from. 10 plus years ago to stuff that's modern. We even have in this box. <laughs> Boo, hiss. M Audio M Box 3, which sounds like a new product because it's three, but this is uh, not. This is over 10 years old. Here's, a, here's an ID22. There's an ID22. Now, this is this is the big brother or the, the grandfather okay. to that. Great grandfather. This was really the first. This is really the first thing that Audion came out with in terms of an audio interface, and uh, it was quite a quite a piece of gear. And they, st I believe, they still make this one. Yeah. And here's the the Echo Fire Two, which is yeah. Firewire. Firewire. Not too many of those are in the junk pile with that one. Yeah. And, and, then, and one of my favorites, and I love this this unit. The yeah. Apogee One. The Apogee One. The original Apogee One. Yeah. And it was it was a great little unit. It sounded good. And that's really where the the vice president of of uh, of Epigee, yeah, I met at a at a conference. He says, uh, you "Using a preamp with that?" I said, "Well, yeah, I've got a you know an inline." He says, "Go naked," <laughs> and that was that was a good ten twelve years ago. Yeah, no, they have when very out, good and, preamps and and and, and and he was right. And my audio was so much cleaner just to, because they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on research on these things. Yeah. And putting in a putting a preamps into these little tiny boxes, the form factor is cool. In fact, this was very revolutionary. And it has a mic Evo on it too. Looks a lot like, like this, this, right? Yeah. The problem is, is to make something this small, all the connections have to be on a little special funky proprietary breakout cable, and that's the part I don't. I'm not a big fan of that. That cable connection freaks out or flakes on you when you're on the road. You are an SOL. Yeah. I mean, you can use the internal mic. Yes, you that's could true. do that in a pinch, um, which I've ne literally never used it. It still has the plastic on. It. I refuse to pull that off. I, I just I was <laughs> saving that for you. It's been on there for ten years, I guess. And look, it looks brand new. Wow. <laughs> I should put it on eBay. <laughs> anyway, we'll do a test some well, yeah. coming up. But we anyway. have an extra week before we do our next tech talk, so maybe we'll have time to we actually set it to up. Prep that. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. All that right. Fun. So I'm going to take this pile of junk, put it back okay. on the couch. Where and, it will be until next time. And it'll probably still be there in two weeks. Anyway, there you go. Our first, isn't that the, was that the first real unboxing we've done on the show? I think so. Yeah. Real unboxing. Wow. Nine years we've been, by the way. Our Special next, milestone coming up. Our, our next show, which we'll be doing on March 16th, will be our ninth, the beginning of our ninth year of doing this show. <sighs> wow. Who'd have thunk it back in 2011? That, you know, that, Unreal that we would be doing this and we didn't know we'd be doing it like this like this you know we were nine years ago we, yeah i was sitting in my extra bedroom in buffalo and you were in your back porch in santa four monica and a half and, years ago yeah yeah and uh and now we're in this magnificent humongous studio <laughs> the networks have everybody us. laughs when they come what this is it <laughs>
Think of it like the TARDIS. Yeah, really. Anyway. It is kind of like that. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Well, we got lots of great questions from you guys, which we have been asking you to send us over the last couple of weeks, and we will attend to those questions right after these incredibly important messages from our incredibly important sponsors. Be right back. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Voice Over Essentials only has five of the mixer face without the SD card version. The SD version kind of baffles me for VO anyway, being worth an additional hundred bucks. Backup, I guess. But I always want to record to some device where I can edit. Anyway, the no recording version is on sale now at Voice Over Essentials, and they only have five left. The regular price, $349.94. Sale price, $329.94. Free shipping in the continental U.S. Mixerface R4 integrates your iPhone, iPad, or Android device into the audio production workflow, making mobile recording easy for broadcasters, musicians, and VO artists on the go. Combined with a long-lasting rechargeable battery, two Nutrick combo jacks, headphone monitor, and 24-bit 192 kilohertz converters, you get an unbeatable mobile production tool right in your pocket. Get it now over at voiceoveressentials.com and tell them we sent you. Thanks, Arlen. Hey everybody, it's the time of the show where we get to thank one of our sponsors and tell you guys about what the heck it is that they do over at Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and so many, oh, I can fix my collar now, uh, and so many other great nice products. Um, the one that you're probably most going to be interested in checking out in the context of a voice actor is going to be Source Connect. And uh, it's the tool that has definitely established itself as the heir apparent to ISDN in the vast majority of the pro studios around the world at this point, especially in countries where ISDN has literally been disconnected permanently. That is coming to the U.S. very soon. The prediction is 2020, this year, that it will go away in the U.S., that might get stretched out a little bit, but it's going away. So Source Connect is the tool you want to have in your toolbox, especially uh, when you're trying to play a higher, uh, the next level up in your voiceover career, land some of the agents. Agents are often requiring this. And there's gigs, the bigger paying ones, the commercials and promo and that kind of thing that require it. So go check it out. Get a get a promo or really a demo, actually, um, at their website, source-elements.com, and you can get a 15-day free trial and start using it right away. And I just want to get this in there. If you're going to go to VO Atlanta, Source Elements is a sponsor, and they'll be there again this year. And you get to be there and chat with Robert in person, get a little test of the system. And I, they may have a studio there this year. They have in years past where you can actually do sessions in a pinch. So go check them out at VO Atlanta. Anyway, thanks a lot, Source Elements. We appreciate your support of our show. We'll be right back with more Tech Talk right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, if we haven't totally bored you to tears, especially the podcast people going, what on earth is going on? Well, <laughs> I mean, but at least we were discussing how it worked in the mic demonstration <laughs> and stuff. But George and I love doing what we do, which is 
helping you guys do it right, making sure your audio sounds the way it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. And it's, you know, again, with the, 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 the equipment that we use is not designed to do what we do. Not yeah, the Evo is getting closer. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they're it's getting there. I, I think the manufacturers have sort of skipped over the pod, you know, the, the, the voiceover, voiceover people niche. and are jumping into the, the podcasting because podcast, yeah. there's a lot more people doing podcasting. Right. It doesn't mean, and everybody they're not making can, money. No, no. <laughs> the manufacturers are, but, you know, yeah. you know as, and as I like to say, you can, everybody can do a podcast. It doesn't mean sure. everybody should do a podcast. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. you know, there sure are a lot. I, you know, I started checking them out. Like, how can you possibly choose between all of this stuff anyway? Yeah. But you guys are voice actors and we're here to help you out with voice over audio, which is a very, very specific way to record. And it's amazing to the two of us, how you guys tend to overthink all this stuff. Yeah. It's actually quite simple, but you have to understand the basics. And what George and I do is we get you down to the basics so you can learn a little bit more advanced and how to make sure that your audio is sounding right. But it's not the equipment. It's the environment and the acoustics, how you use it and how you use it. And that's what we really teach you guys how to mm -hmm. do. And what we do is come into your home or your office or your girlfriend's home or wherever it is your that closet. we end up your closet. Uh, and we sniff around, we find the best place to record in your particular domicile and we set it up for you and show you how to do it. And we charge you for it, but it's totally worth it because we will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a in, huge shortcut, uh, in mistakes and education and hours of mind numbing confusion and forum and posts. frustration. Yes. Tech support by yeah. committee. No. Turn, turn the mic around. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if they would like to, if you if you guys out there would like to work with a professional like us, you can work with George and you will find him over at hmm. georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech. If you like those short nerdy domains like I do, um, I've got a, a menu of services there, a lot of different ways to work with you. And if it all is just too mind numbing, or maybe you've got so many different things that you want to have dealt with, you don't know where to start, just send me a message. We'll let you know where to start. But that's George the dot tech. And Dan does it as well on his place on the web. And that's homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, and, you know, I do a lot of the same stuff. I'm a full time voice actor. I understand really what your life is like and sure. how to make sure that, you know, your home voiceover studio fits into your lifestyle and, and works for you and has the right workflow for you. Mm -hmm. And if you've already set up your studio, I'd like to hear what it sounds like. And I want to hear your raw That's a good audio. Place to start, always. Yeah. I've got uh, my specimen collection cup at my home uh, site, uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. For $25, I will listen to your audio. And believe me, it's amazing what I hear from people. And sometimes it it's is like amazing. three seconds, like, you got it, no problem. And then it's like, oh, somebody was listening to their friend who's a musician who says, you got to use this and you got to use that. And I think we actually have a question about that tonight. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that yeah, question in a yeah. few minutes. Anyway, we're here for you. So mm -hmm. let's get into some of the tech questions that have been sent to us by our marvelous worldwide audience. We've made them wait long enough. They have. You know, our first one is from Randy Frangillo. And Randy says, hi guys, I built a home studio out in the garage and now I need to build bass trap, bass traps, B bass traps are for, he built a fishing pond in the yes, backyard, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> bass traps, bass. but I read some scary stuff about fiberglass and mineral wool and possible health effects that kind of freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Are there healthier alternatives to effectively treat my space? Denim, hemp, sheep's wool. Can multiple layers of moving blankets be made into a, ba a base trap? Or is all this talk about mineral wool and fibers floating in the air a bunch of hooey? If it matters, the dimensions of my room are roughly five, you know, he gives, gives us some numbers here, mm -hmm. which really mean nothing uh, until you really put your head in there and listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a fifth wall where the door is at 45 degrees. I think sometimes people confuse the idea of base trap with 
acoustical panel. Now, a bass trap is an acoustical panel, but yeah. not all acoustical panels are bass traps. Right, right. They're, they're two different. A bass trap is a type of acoustic panel, exactly. And it's designed to control the lower frequencies in the room, which are oftentimes the most problematic in most people's recording spaces. Yeah. Right. And but uh, how to make one that's safe. Um, you know, I've, I've installed some from ATS, based, some of their bass traps. They use the mineral wool. Yeah, you don't want the loose particles in the air. No. That is definitely not good. And um, the fiberglass would be particularly bad because of the chemicals, the glues, things that are in the fiberglass. Um, the mineral wool, most people don't have any trouble with that issue. And when they're built correctly, typically those powered particles are completely surrounded inside the panel. You don't want to buy acoustical panels that have exposed material in the back. Right. There are some companies out there, and before you order acoustic panels ask are What's your panels backing? completely encapsulated or covered or are they open because there are a number of companies that do them open and they leave the back exposed that's a no-no right um i do know from personal experience working with ats that their base traps are fully encapsulated like they have the the fabric wraps all around on all sides and i've never seen that one be uh be a problem with the fi fiber uh, fiber not fiber but the particulates or the fibers getting out right um, yeah now i've got these uh, these these panels up here in the ceiling that i built they have rock wool in them yeah i covered the back with weed blocker oh yeah which worked great yeah traps weeds can't get there. through it none of those particles are getting yeah it. but here's here's the tip of the week if you're talking about building panels or trying to dampen the uh the acoustics in the room a bit go to the thrift store and get a pile of old towels mm -hmm. and and layer those and seal those up and put some nice fabric around them those work great as well heavy dense yeah. whatever towels you can find and i'm if you go to a thrift store you know you may want to wash them first but you know but they will do a really good job of diffusing and absorbing the sound in a room you know and if you're yeah. in a closet you how many do you need you know a two by four closet or something like that and if you're in a closet that already has all your clothing hanging on two walls, you don't need any because you already have bass traps, folks. Best, uh, best sounding rooms. Yeah. Walking denim, closets. there are some products made with recycled denim. Um, they're pretty expensive usually. Um, I don't know of anything that's made with hemp or sheep's wool. You could be joking. I don't know. But there might be somebody out there. Um, but the, the, the towels work. The moving blankets also work. Similar concept. Um, but you need to build up a lot of layers for them to give you the base trapping capabilities not one thin layer is going to do that right yeah and I, I had my studio suit but i don't sell that anymore but that worked great because that was a combination base trap and it, it just absorbed frequencies at the right the right uh right frequency nice <laughs> and it sounded excellent. great excellent so those people who still have them you know what i'm talking about <laughs> uh we have a question here from portugal where i'm going in november with the missus oh lovely yes Taking another river cruise. But this is from Jose Zhao. I think that's how you pronounce it in Portuguese, but who knows how to pronounce Portuguese except the Portuguese? <laughs> exactly, or the Brazilians. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh no, no, no. No. I know someone from Portugal. Uh, he says the people in Brazil do not speak the same Portuguese as the people in Portugal. There you go. And you know, yeah, don't sure offend either side. That's so. like saying that Canadians speak French the way the, the Parisians speak French. Yeah, that doesn't work. That. I played hockey for a long time. It's, <laughs> it's not the same. Anyways. He says, I'm a Portuguese VO, and over the years, I completely understood that less is more. All right, Jose. As we say. Um, so right now, I only use my mics, a Neumann TLM-103 and a Sennheiser MKH-416 and my Yamaha AG-03. All the rest, if needed, is post-production. Um, so my question is, what do you think about the newest Audient Evo 4? Interesting you mean, timing. You mean the, <laughs> the Evo 4? Well, it is cute. We don't know. <laughs> it's cute and it's very attractive. And light. Uh, and we're going to be putting it through its paces one of these days. Um, another new product he's mentioning that just was also launched at NAMM was the Solid State SSL 2. Um, which I'm curious to try out as well. I think it's a, a different class of product. It's much more heavy duty. It's larger physically. 
Um, so that one I would like to try out in the real world as well. SSL, if you're paying attention. Um, they could change the way we, we think and work concerning audio f interfaces or not. Um, I don't or know not. if anything is going to reinvent things. I mean, the audience, again, the Evo 4 has that auto level detect. That's really the only thing that's truly new and relevant to voiceover that's in any way different than anything else. But that's really the only thing that really jumps out at me. Again, that two track record return loopback thing is cool, but it doesn't work for Skyping and Zoom because it's two new tracks so that when you try to play something back, it won't be heard on Skype or Zoom. So that's something they got to work out still. Doesn't mean that they won't. Um, but uh, we don't know yet. It's too too early to tell. But at least you got to see the Evo 4 uh, as we did. So it, it feels nice in the hand. Right. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's a matter of function over form or sound mm -hmm. ones and zeros are ones and zeros is there really a difference and we'll have to give this a good test is yeah. there a real difference between these interfaces these price points too and, and th you know that's going to affect the quality of your voice usually yeah. when you get over a certain price point and not a very high one it really doesn't matter uh you know i don't want to insult people who make this good this really great stuff but they yeah. make great stuff if you're a musician yeah. And if you're a real audio geek and you really like playing with this stuff, it's great. But to keep thing keep yourself sane, you know, we have another question coming up about that in a few minutes here. Cool. But uh yeah, I I think that uh you know, interfaces are interfaces. Yeah, I mean the auto level thing, it could be a game changer or a gadget, and we'll find out. All right. Now, next question. That's uh, a new name for a segment. Game changer or gadget? Game, I like that. Take that, right. Take a note of that, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. This is from Brian in New Jersey. Hey, right. Brian. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with New Jersey. Or you've been to New Jersey. Way to start. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no. New it's a beautiful no. state. It's the Garden State. It is. It is. You can ski there and go to the beach. Did you know that? You can do that here. Not just California. Yeah. Anyway, I recently upgraded from an 06 iMac. Is that like the one that's like on the stand that's... Yeah, it's probably white. Yeah. It's probably all uh, white, yeah. And Audacity, which actually worked swimmingly. Mm -hmm. uh, my new beautiful iMac is awesome. But alas, no Audacity on Catalina for me. Yeah, not Why? yet, anyway. Yeah. yeah. I figured I would quickly learn Logic Pro <laughs> X. Oh, but God. But oof. Not so fast. Do you recommend <laughs> any particular resource to learn Logic for VO? I also upgraded from Mbox Mini to an Epigee Duet. Good good choice. I regularly use a Neumann TLM-103 and can't wait to get back into it like before. Any thoughts? Well, Logic is great if... You're producing you're television a, commercials or, or you're a musician composing music for doing uh, you know total tra soundtracks for video and movies for voiceover again it's a control room for a nuclear reactor to control a hamster running in a wheel <laughs> yeah that's one of my favorite <laughs> analogies <laughs> i mean uh, come on now it's like yeah. yeah you can learn logic it's great if you want to you know learn some advanced recording techniques yeah. but don't apply it to your voiceover career apply your time knowledge and 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 uh and capital into training you know there's coaching. just certain tools that it just lacks or it has but in the wrong way and the one i'll harp on because i just know this one well is normalize i particularly do use normalize as part of my processing process like it's why. part of the it's part of the thing in normal in in uh, logic normalize is an afterthought literally it only happens at the point of export that's where normalize happens. So you can't even use normalize in the way that we use normalize in all the other DAWs like Audition and Twisted Wave. And you can't. You just can't. And that that's just one example. But um, it's also, it wants to, by default, always make a stereo file. You sort of have to hack the thing to make a mono file. That's just like GarageBand. Same dang problem. So if you've been watching the show for a while, you've heard us mention Twisted Wave just give it a try. I know you already, maybe, probably already did spend two hundred dollars on Logic. Sorry, um, but eighty bucks for a Twisted Wave—you'll thank us. Because if you like Audacity, 
you're probably going to like Twisted Wave. It's it's similar and it's it, it's elegant, reliable, straightforward, and, uh, and you it does run it. on Catalina. Yeah, and you only pay for it once. You pay for it once, and then yeah. and then they update it when there's an update. And there's support. And there's support. And there is support. It's really good support. Really good. Uh, Thomas, the guy that builds that, is a great guy, and yeah. uh, it's been a. You know, when you start to use that, and there are people say, I don't like it. It's, you know, it doesn't have all the features that I like. Like what? Record, stop, play, rewind, <laughs> edit, edit, cut, paste. cut, paste. I mean, what else is there? Well, no, I've got to do all that processing. Mm. Yeah, there's ways, there's ways that, you, there's ways to do that and it doesn't require that exact nuclear reactor today. yeah now maria Marcus, of course asked the same question have you checked out the evo 4 wow that's the hot that's a hot topic they must have all watched the show last week yeah yeah we're going to for sure maria as we mentioned i it's can't going wait to check it out yeah as i know the people at audience can't wait for us to check it out yeah uh jay horace black who we haven't heard from oh yeah hey, this is uh, it's for you oh uh, hey, George, you had mentioned that you liked the AU audio noise canceling headphones. I think that was Aw Sounds. AU Sounds was okay. the name of that company. All right. Um, did you ever get them? Nope. Didn't get them yet. <laughs> uh, maybe I, I'm going to try to reach, maybe I'll reach out to them and see if they want to have us demo those headphones. Uh, I haven't made the plunge. $300. I think they're still in pre-order until March 1st, I believe. So uh, maybe by next time I'm on the show, man, eh, we'll see. There's a lot of things to spend money on right now. Maybe not headphones, but I hope to get them. Um, and when I do, I'll give you some actual useful information. Um, in terms of can you use them for monitoring voiceover, I can't imagine why you couldn't. Um, we'll see. I believe, if I recall, they're closed back mm -hmm. like these. They're sealed um you don't want to use headphones for recording voiceover that are open because the sound will pass out of the headphones and could be then picked up in the mic and that can cause some issues or even feedback um, but as long as they're sealed like these and as long as they have an analog connection to plug into the computer as these do as well they should work great for monitoring voiceover and i yeah. can't see why they wouldn't well is it monitoring while you're recording or is it monitoring listening to somebody else or listening right. while you're editing what's the situation yeah i mean because not and sometimes the same pair of headphones isn't always the isn't the greatest option for doing both of those and of course as we've talked about a lot on the show sometimes you shouldn't even wear headphones while voice acting so it just depends on your situation but um i'm looking forward to try them for sure and you guys will certainly know when i get to so all right all right. And one from Thomas Machen. Hey. Thomas, who we know is there all the time. Uh, it says, it's all magic, Dan and George, the Wizards of VO. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> uh, Lee right. Penny says, great show, no guys. guys. Hey, hey Lee. Lee Penny. Right? Thanks for being Lee Penny. Lee yeah. Penny. Come join us here, Lee. Come on. You're not that far. You're just down the, down the, down the road a little bit, <laughs> up, up the beach. Yeah. Anyway. All right, I, think, it, I guess. Yeah, that's that's enough geekiness for one week. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, again, if you've got questions for us, send them to us at theguys at vobs.tv right there. And uh, we'd love to hear your questions. You, you're curious about something, uh, whether it's, it's you know a piece of equipment, whether it's technique, because I think maybe we're starting to get the point across to people that it's not the equipment. It's how you use it. It's mm -hmm. technique. There are certain basic things that you need to know how to do in order to use the equipment. Otherwise, yeah. it's just expensive paperweights. Right. Yep. All right. Exactly. All right. Well, we got a couple of messages from our incredibly important sponsors, and we'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. So, Levelator. It did a great job of RMS normalization for audiobook content and podcast episodes, but it's orphaned software, which means no one's developing it anymore. And now it doesn't work with the latest Macs and Catalina Mac OS. So you're stuck, right? Well, not anymore. Behold the gooey goodness of Audio Cupcake. Visit audiocupcake.com and download the free Audio Cupcake app for Macintosh. Audio Cupcake does exactly what Levelator did so well for so long. It applies RMS normalization to your audio, and it preps your work for ACX. And it does it so well with Mac OS, including Catalina. Just like with Levelator, you drag and drop your audio file onto the Audio Cupcake window, and out pops an RMS normalized file. But Audio Cupcake goes even further. Unlock the premium features of Audio Cupcake. And what pops out? Audio that is both RMS and peak normalized and converted to a 192K mono MP3 file ready for uploading to ACX or your podcast platform. That's delicious audio goodness. Audio Cupcake is available free at audiocupcake.com. That's audiocupcake.com. Audio Cupcake. A beautiful, simple way to master your audio narration and podcasts. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, you've done it again. You've not wasted a perfectly good hour of your time, as they used to say on Car Talk. <laughs> uh but, oh, car talk. Yes. Uh, but hopefully you're you're getting the information you need here, and uh, that was fun. And it's always fun doing it with you because you're the guy that knows. And I'm the guy that does. <laughs> I guess You it. listen to me. I love it. <laughs> and you and listen, listen to me. To we, we actually we, learn we, stuff from each other. We've melded our, our brains. It's like you know, the, the Vulcan mind meld <laughs> occasionally. Remember back when Jack the Goalie would like take screenshots and post them on Facebook I after the them. show? I still use them. That would have been one. Yeah. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> well, I can, we can still go back and take any one of those frames. <laughs> anyway, uh, next week on this show, we're going to we're gonna play one of our great all-time interviews. I'm not sure which one it is, but we'll put it on there. If you got any ideas. Yeah. Uh, send it in. And then the following week... Uh, March 16th, which is next week, if you're watching this next week, because you are watching this next week. I'm trying uh, to keep track, yeah. Simon Vance will be our guest. Simon Vance, one of the top audiobook narrators on the face of the earth. 
prolific. And he just built himself a new studio in his backyard, just a standalone studio like this marvelous studio here. Nice. And uh, I imagine it'll be a little further along in its progress. He's been posting pictures on Facebook, but we'll have a video and we'll hear Simon's amazing voice, which is just always a pleasure to hear. Go into Audible and type in for author search Simon, Simon Vance. Vance and get a bowl of popcorn and eat popcorn <laughs> and start scrolling. Exactly. You'll, exactly. you'll finish the popcorn. Yes. So, who are our donors of the week? Yes, quite a list this week. Yeah. Natasha Marshuka. Am I saying that right? Marchuka. Please have. So you're sorry, just, Tash. You're too nice, and <laughs> I'm too slow to learn how to speak Russian. I'm sorry. Next, Polish. And <laughs> I misidentified the race. So, swing. <laughs> I get one more chance at bad here. <laughs> Natasha Marchevka. There you Natasha. go. Christy Burns, Rob Rader, uh, Graham Spicer, Uncle Roy Yokelson of Antland Productions, Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Shelley Avellino, George Whittem, my dad Whittem, um, Patty Gibbons, and Mike Gordon. Almost all familiar names. Rob Rader is a new one to me. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Well, uh, we really we're, appreciate we're, it. We were in his studio last well, week. There you go. You know, like, now, for Tech Talk, we like to have these technical backgrounds. We like waveforms. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you have something interesting you want to send us, send it to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. And maybe we'll use it. And maybe we'll go, wow, that's a really interesting picture. And move <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, anyway... <laughs> If, if you'd like to be uh, here in the studio to actually watch us make fun of each other every week, uh, come on down. Uh, write to us at theguys at VOBS.TV if you're in the greater Los Angeles area, because there is no lesser Los Angeles area. Uh, and, uh, Not yet, anyway. Yes. Waiting and, for the big earthquake. Yeah. On a, on a Monday on a Monday afternoon, and come join us live and watch this mayhem as it happens. Uh mm -hmm. Anyway, let's see. What else? We need to think. We need to think about. But while we're thinking about it, we need to thank our sponsors. This is what happens. That was almost a good week. recovery. I don't know. No, I may not have, may not be able to give you points for that. One. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's thank our sponsors. You go first, Hugo. <laughs> Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Voiceover Extra. Sour Sermons. VoiceoverHeroes.com. <laughs> VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Mm. All righty. And, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Web and Podcasting. Mm -hmm. and we're building a new, a whole new wing for the museum. <laughs> Good. You're going to need it. Yeah. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman, doing our great work in, uh, in the, in the chat room tonight, and our amazing technical director who just makes it look effortless as she's there in flop sweat. Uh, Sue Merlino. Thank you, Sue. Great job tonight. Say hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. That's better. There okay, you good. Go. Thank you. All right. I hooked up that damn mic. You better use it. <laughs> I could talk a lot more if you want. That's, that's okay. That's we're right. Good. The show's over. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're out of time. <laughs> I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We'll see you in a couple weeks, guys. Have a good one. Good night.